lift up your voice and give him praise. Exalt to magnify him. Worship him. He is the Lord who reigns over our life. We give you praise. We give you praise. What an awesome God you are. What a mighty God you are. I don't know why you came this morning, but I came to worship the life giver, the creator of the heavens and the earth, our Lord and our King. Satoske Ligados Kadiadosa, Imande Soto Librados Katahidado. We worship you, Lord. We join the 24 elders, we bow at your feet. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' precious, mighty name we have worship. Let everyone that believes say better. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many of us are grateful to God for the life he has given unto us? You may be seated. For the joy he has put in our heart for his glory. We are God's glory on earth. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's an excellent God. He's one whose words are not enough to articulate how we truly feel about him. But he's just good. He's gracious. No matter how far you've gone in the journey of life, if you look at your life and you cannot see God, then there is nothing to it. You know, if up till this moment, the things that we have seen and the things that we're seeing is about our ability and strength, then, uh, but if truly God is the one who has been called over your life, worship will not be what we are motivated to do. Hallelujah. I was sharing with Mommy B that the Lord began to say to me and began to tell me about different kind of people, why his love is unfreeing to us. But he said, there are some that cannot actually be committed to me. Not because I do not want them, but because that is how they, they are. Because I was asking God in my prayers, I said, why, are, why is it that, man, we find it very difficult to be committed to God. Sometimes our commitment is in our words. We just talk because we have the effrontery to talk. But the real, actual commitment is something we cannot keep. Because it began to bother me why, you know, have you ever been in a relationship where, you know, what relationship is? Every time we say about, we talk about relationship, we're not just saying relationship that is a marriage or anything, but you, your workplace, you are in a relationship. Your everywhere, your place of work is a relationship, you know. But you find that there are certain people who cannot be trusted. Because they cannot commit to that relationship. And that in itself makes a particular area where you try to fellowship not be as productive as it should be. How many of us know that? That there is this belief that with you alone you are a success. You are the greatest success that exists. The next person who comes to affiliate with you, if they are not truly vetted, they, they determine... Your, the outcome of your life. Like I'm thinking that watch is, that clock is not working. The clock up there is not working. Hallelujah. They determine because the Bible says in Amos 3 verse 3, can two walk except they be in agreement. So when there is no agree, when, you know, agreement is not what we will do, you know, but agreement is that when we put in the work, when we put in the commitment, so I was like complaining to God that I find a lot of people who talk 
but they can't really commit to what they say. And God said to me, there are also people who are not committed to me. They wake up in the morning. They take their bath. If they do, some don't. They are focused on their plans. They jump out and they begin to execute their plans. And if paraventure there, is a, there are hiccups in their plan, they remember me, they did not remember when they were taken off. And more of what they do is they complain of my not doing anything to see that their plans are fulfilled. But these are plans that I was not included in. Hallelujah. And they live through their life, all their life that way. You know, sometimes we do this, what we do, before we go into the world. But for me, those are the real world. They do that all their life. They do it. And at the end of life, it becomes what it is. I want us to reflect in our life and say, where do I fall into? Am I into those categories of people? Lead my life the way I want. And if you look at it, it plays out to everything they do. You cannot, you know, the Bible says, confident in an unfaithful man in a time of need is like a broken teeth. The question this morning I want to ask was, can I be relied upon? Can I be relied upon? Can I? That is what I'm asking us. I'm asking ourselves. Can I be relied upon? Am I dependable? Because it's easy to say we serve a dependable God, but we are the reflection of the God we talk about. Am I dependable? Am I reliable? Am I confident? Can anyone lean on me and not fall? I. Because these are the virtues of a believer. These are the manifestation. These are the fruit of our salvation. Because if we're not very careful, we talk in tongues, we talk large spiritually, we act for the virtues of who we are are not manifesting for the benefit of those around us. Because the Bible says that the gift of the Spirit is for us to profit with all. Am I, am I truly one who unconsciously I am dependable I'm reliable I can really commit to something because you see it starts from committing to God and you can commit to life you can commit to humanity you can commit somebody can you can be trusted because if you cannot be trusted the God you talk about cannot be trusted in your circle you are the voice you are the representation. You are the person. You are the light of the world. The one who through the men see the glory of God. When everyone sees, they are supposed to see the glory. So your world, you know, the integrity of a man is in his words. And the words are not spoken words. But the words are the action words. Hallelujah. We are ending our series, the leadership series, and that is what it is. We believe that every living Tremite is a leader. You might not be leading anyone, but you are a leader released to your world to lead men and women unto Christ. You're leading them. In John 4, a woman who had no reputation in the city with an encounter with Jesus Christ led the nation to Christ. Because what God does is an encounter with him, he gives you a reputation. 
these days we should begin to look out for you know we we should be looking uh, we should be looking out for the virtues of 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 a believer and we we should be demanding it and say if you be Christ then you walk ye in him we should be demanding that from ourselves that truthfully we are believers we are not just church goers it's not dress on sunday come to church and we but if ye be Christ because there is somebody on planet earth who is meant to connect with you to come to God. There is somebody on planet I believe that. You did not get saved just for God to meet your need, to pray about things. No, you got saved so that you become that medium through which Christ will reach people. But you see, those people who Christ will reach through you, they will, can only come to Christ by the manifestation of the virtue of, of God. This is, the Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 20, it says God will do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think, but according to his power, which is at work in us. According to his power, which is at work in us. So it is God's power at work in us. There is no power in man to do anything. Everything we do, we do by the power of God. That has been vested in us. What we have is what we call authority. Authority is exercising the power that somebody else carries, but you have the authority. So, the believers, we have authority. When we exhibit that authority, we are backed by the power of God. It's the season to be a Christian. Say that to yourself. It is a season to be a Christian. That's the season where we are in. The season to be a Christian. This is the best time. Hallelujah. You know, the concept that was praying, he says that every seat must be filled. I believe that with all my heart. But the seats that are already filled must be filled with those who are taking up Christ. Truth. Because you see, if there is no physical transformation for those who already fill the seat, those who are to come, sees nothing that will attract them. So, the, in our leadership discourse, we started, I'm not going to do a lot of uh, back take because I just want to do what I want to do today. In our leadership discourse, we did talk about the vision, our vision as a ministry. And our vision is just uh, encapsulated in these few words. We raise believers to live the righteous life in their word for the kingdom. We just raise believers to live, to showcase. So we, we normally say this way, we equip the saints to make formidable impact in their word for the kingdom. So I, I, I believe is that as you sit under the ministration, as you come for fellowship, as you come for worship, when you leave, you go out there to make formidable impact. And formidable impact has nothing to do with the physical acquisition. It has to do with the transference of what we have received. Hallelujah. So we believe that everyone who comes to fellowship as we fellowship together, the vision, the purpose of the vision will emanate through us. We must become that example that our nation is looking for, that example that our city will look for. I was saying to my wife today when we were driving in, I said there is this woman who walked in a place where everyone has lost hope of the credibility, but she stood out and she made certain comments. She said, first of all, I am a mother and second, I'm a Christian. You know, it is, it is great to hear and say, because I'm a Christian, I will not go the way of others. What, 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 what guides my, my, my value is my belief in Christ. Hallelujah. So that is how we make formidable impact. That's how we change our world. That's how we transform our world. Making sure that we show them the Christ we talk about. We exemplify Christ. Always ask yourself, what would Christ do in this situation? When he came to the sick, he prayed. When he came to the dead, he prayed. When he came to the hungry, he fed. When he came to the brokenhearted, he comforted. 
What will Christ do? That is what is required of us. When he came to where integrity lacked, he showed integrity. So today we're going to wrap it up. We said that our foundation in Trem is the word. That's the tool we use in equipping the saints, the word of God. And our motto is power in the world. The word is what we use in equipping, not in earth. Because you see, the truth is that whatever the word of God does not give you, you don't need it. It does not exist. Everything is in the world. Whatever you don't find in the world is not meant for us. And when you don't know what the word says, you don't know what to expect, you don't know what to receive. Faith could be defined as the action we take based on our belief in the word. So you can't say I'm walking by faith if you don't have the word. Because Romans 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. So if I've not heard, I don't have faith. I have to hear to have faith. So when somebody says to you, I have faith, say, ask them, what have you heard? Hallelujah. So my team, as we, please just bear with me, indulge me. We stand up to your feet as we honor reading of the word of God. We just take a foundational scripture and we go on. What I'm going to be talking about is, the, you see, the, the only thing we, when you ask, when we say we feed, what we feed by is the word. The Bible says in Jeremiah 3 verse 15, For thou give pastors after my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And what, that what we feed with is the word. Hallelujah. So our foundational scripture this morning is taken from Deuteronomy 3, from Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. And that was repeated in Luke 4 by 4. But let's use Deuteronomy 8 3. Deuteronomy 8 3, I read from the King James Version. It says, And he humbled them and suffered thee. He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not. Neither did thy father know that he may make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Father, we thank you. Your words are errorless, impregnable, authoritative, sharper than two others' word. We ask, so God, that your word should do the finished work in our life. Feed us with your word. Guide us with your word. Heal us by your word. And let Jesus be glorified. Thank you, my Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may be seated. Thank you. In Trem as a ministry, everything we do is anchored on the word of God. Is the word anchored on the word of God. Our first, our, 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 our assignment is to make sure that as many that God has brought to us, we point them to the world. We point them to the world. We make them understand the importance of knowing what God has said for themselves. The importance of engaging in the world. Because it's the tool that we need for everything. Is by the world we know the promises of God. The world is what God guides us with. In from the scripture where we read in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, it says that he suffered them less than but just says to them, so that they will know, they will know, they will know. And Jesus, give me Luke 4 4. Jesus, in response, in response to the temptation, said. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Which means in conclusion, we, should, we can live by the word and live a fulfilled life. A fulfilled life is a life that is lived by, that is lived by the word of God. Is it true? I want to see if that English is correct. Hallelujah. Anyone who lives by the word 
become manifest the word. Now the question is, if I have to live by the word, the first thing I ask, do I know what the word says? How many of us can confidently say that I know what the word of God says? We live in there an age where everybody is looking for miracle. Only few. Many a time you hear people, you know, we live. Thank God for this time where you can go onto the internet, you go to the YouTube, you will find out a lot of preachers, a lot of people doing a lot of things. But you will know who is who based on what is on their timeline. You will know what one is pursuing based on what you find on their timeline. But can I beg you, at least let something be found on your timeline. There are many of us who sit down and think it's comedy. So all you are looking for is that do miracle, do miracle, do miracle. So on your timeline is every miracle worker. I know it's not wrong, but honey, you cannot grow by just watching miracles. No amount of miracle that you watch that will help you grow. No amount of miracle you sit under. That will help you to grow. So if that becomes your pursuit, the reason why you are not seeing it manifest in your life is because you don't know how it happens. Nothing in the kingdom is void of the word of God. The distance that you will go in the kingdom determines the, the level of the word of God that you have. Not the word of God that... Oh, you know, I normally said to mommy, be that... The, Basic Christian has up to about 10 pastors who they follow. So when they call you on the phone and say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me, don't even, don't, don't lie to yourself thinking that you are the only one who is praying. Another nine is praying. One in this Karakamunda, the other one is there. There is one prophesying. There is one, you know. So they call you, pray for you. You, you just do your beef. Do your beat. Because the other nine also is on, is, is on. And they like the one that says to them, send your picture and put 100 euro with it. Because last night when I was praying, I saw a tree shaking at the back of your house. I'm not trying to ridicule anybody, but the, two, the truth is this. The moment you begin to fall to those things, you are only, the, the issue is you don't know the word of God, so you become a prey. There are certain prayer requests that somebody will ask you as a pastor or even as a believer. Tell them that the reason why you are asking for this request is because you have refused to look into the word of God. Because if you looked, you would have found the answer. You found the answer. If you've done what, so what we do in Trem is that we believe in the miraculous God. We believe in the walking of God. We believe in these things. But we also believe in equipping the believer to become a miracle worker. It releases the pastors so that we can do better. The, Peter said in Luke 6, in Acts of the Apostle 6, he said, let's look for men so that we will hand over the business of praying for the sick, doing those things so that we will give ourselves to prayer and the studying of the word. Somebody should be sick. I should be able to send somebody and say, go there and pray for them. Without me running head to scatter because I have other things to do. But if you've not equipped those who should do the work of the ministry, you will do everything. So we believe. I want to ask you, that thing that you are standing on, where did you find it? That thing you are believing for, where did you find it in the scripture? Have you found it yet? That expectation. It is enough to say 2023 is my year of a seeding great reward. Can I tell you what that means? 
Reward is not a gift. Reward is what is given in return to what you have done. What are you doing for it to become a year of a sitting great reward? What are you actually doing in the kingdom? What is it you are doing? What would you be rewarded for? It's not just quoting. We know we have it all over. It's my year of a city. No matter the no matter the prophecy, no matter the declaration over you, reward is not just given to anyone. It's given to and reward is in stages and in grades. So what we should have done when God gave us the word that is our year of exceeding great reward, what you do, you up your gain, you can determine the level of your reward. Hallelujah. There's so much to do in the kingdom. So when God comes into, can I say this to us? When God comes into the house of mercy and say, it is our turn, which is our turn? What kind of reward would you get if everyone is being rewarded on how we are serving God? You don't serve God in your mind. Then you know, in my mind, I'm doing as you can. We, if we all are doing in our mind, this place will be grounded. Even if me as a pastor, when God comes to my office and says, hey, Chuka, I want to start rewarding everybody in who is under you. Can you, that's when men begin to say, he's, I'm not partial. There are people under the sun, under the rain, in night and day, they are committed to see that the vision that God has put in our hand is being flourished. Honey, hear me. It will be an aberration for me because of you who refuse to do nothing, not to reward those who are doing. When I was younger, people complained and say, is he only this person? And I'm looking at them. Because of them, I stopped rewarding those who are actually working. This morning we were coming. I drove from Cork. There are many of you who would have gone to where I went to. You won't come to church this morning. You will have an excuse. So I drove from Cork. And because Brajiga came early, that's why he came before me. By nine, 13 minutes past nine, we're here. We wonder when I left Cork. While we were leaving, we saw something. While we we're coming into Galway, we saw something. And I said to Mommy B, nobody sees this person, but God does. And when God begins to reward the person publicly, those who are doing nothing will start complaining. Because while you are sleeping, people are walking to make sure that things are going on. So, it's not just about saying, it's for us. But when it comes for us, what level would you receive? If you are not in any department, at least if people are not in church, you know. Text them and say, we didn't see you in church today. Just do something. Just every living, anybody who is alive does something. You must be alive to anywhere you are. You get to your place of work. And there's a piece of paper on the floor. Because you are not the cleaner, you walk past it. Why not just pick it up and put it in the trash? You know, that shows, that shows the totality of your life. You see, when it's not your assignment, it's your opportunity. Can I repeat that? When it's not your assignment, it is your opportunity. And many of us have not used that. You say, I'm not the one, I'm not employed here, I'm, the, I'm, not, I'm a manager in this place, so I will leave the paper until the cleaner comes. <laughs> That's why you are still managing. That's why you are where you are. Because you don't understand how opportunity works. If you do everything that you are assigned to do, I normally say to people, those who are extraordinary in life, what do they do? They do extra of what the ordinary people does. Anywhere you engage in, we can know your life based on what you do. I tell you the truth. You don't, there is no secret to what you do somewhere else. This is the you. This is the totality. This is the truth. This is the totality of you. This is how you are. Take you anywhere. It is not the location or the position that has made you. It take you anywhere. You are still you. 
But look at people who are outstanding and outliners. When they get to any place, because they are outliners already, they will step out of the line. They will just, you will know. They will hit the ground running. There are a few people who came into this church as a pastor. They, the first day they came, they hit the ground running. There are people who we need to, first of all, motivate. We engineer. We begin to whine you, whine you, whine you, whine you, whine you, whine you. Whine you, you become hot. You see, that? can I tell you the truth? I found out over time that such people, when you stop whining, that they become cold. And because I'm tired of whining, I leave you to be cold. You know why? I wouldn't do that all my life. You determine the life. And one of my said to Mommy B, and she's always heard it, no matter who the person is, when people come to call you for advice, I'm a pastor, many by counsel a lot of people. Do you know that one of the things I've always guided myself with is that before they called me, they already know what they want to do. Uh, you know, Reverend, what do you want me to do? Oh, guy, you know what you want to do. You just wanted me to waste my time. Either, and you find out that if you are not in line with what they want to do, they get angry with you. So you know what I normally do? What would you like to do? I just, I'm thinking of killing myself. I say, what the problem? You don't know where they sell poison or the rope. Which one you don't know? Where do you want me to advise you on? Because if you want to kill yourself, you won't call me. <laughs> I will meet you dead. <laughs> so calling me, the issue is that you don't, is it that, is it rope you want to use, poison, which one, or traffic, which one, which of the level of, say, ah, but you bad, sha. Is it die? The die start, and the die plan it for you. you because, say, I'm frustrated, life, I'm tired of life. I say, okay, okay. Did you not hear that the population is too much? That the reason why there is shortage of food is that we are too many. And you are complaining you are tired. And let ant bite such people. You will see them shout because they don't really want to die. No, 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 let me go back to my discourse. You cannot depend on God if you do not know what he has said. What are we depending on? What is the world? In trend, we believe in the infallibility of the word of God. What does that mean? The word of God cannot fail. If God has said it, you can take it to the bank. Irrespective of what you feel, irrespective of what you are going through, the word of God is cast on stone. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same forevermore. We believe in the integrity of the word of God. What does that mean? Integrity is a constant exhibition of positive character. If you look at the character of the word of God, it is constant. There are no variables. When God's word is constant, he has not changed from time to time. So we believe in the integrity that what he says yesterday is valid today. That's why we stand on it. We can't pray if we don't know what the world says. First John 5 14. This is the confidence we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, when you were asking, did you, did you find out if it is will? If we know He heareth us. And if we know He heareth us, we know we have the petition, the answer of the things. Sometimes young people will ask you, How do I know the will of God? When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior and allow your mind to be renewed by the word of God, then you have the mind of Christ according to 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 and Romans 12, 1 and 2 are besieged by brethren by the mercy of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may know what is the acceptable and the perfect will of God. When you allow the word of God to renew your mind, you know the will of God. Because it's always been a question, how do I know the will? Let the word renew your mind. Look at the world. Look at the things it says in his word. Then you will know what to pray for. 
You will know what to declare. You know what your right is in law. What we actually do, what makes lawyers, lawyers is this. We take time to know the right of everyone under our jurisdiction. So when that right is infringed upon, what we do is that we call back the provision and we present the provision and say based on this provision, this right has been infringed upon. So God says in Isaiah 46 verse 23, he said, come let's plead together. He said, let's reason to together declare ye that that may be justified when do you know what i said what are you please what are your pleads what are your pleads what are your pleads jesus said in luke 18 men ought always to pray and using that parable he said there was a woman who came to the judge this woman must have known her right for her to come to the judge so when you come to God for anything, when you claim right, that right must be the right you know. You must know what the word of God. Do you know the reason why it is good to know the word of God? Because that's what our confidence is based upon. That's when you know that even if today cannot negate what God has said about tomorrow. Is somebody hearing me? You are not bothered. You are not bothered by situation because you are confident in this word. With long life will this satisfy me and show me his salvation. Why? Then when, when trouble looks as if they seem around you, you come out and declare Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty and I will serve the Lord. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. In him will I trust. Him. Trouble overtake you in every way. The seams, you see, one of the things I like about the, the psalmist is not just, David is the psalmist, but he didn't write all the psalms. But you look at the psalms he wrote, and those psalms he wrote, he were, sometimes he were in trouble. When he was, when he was in cage in the, in the cave of Adolan, he declared Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? When a host encamp around me, when my foes come around me, when troubles surround me, I will not fear for in these will I trust for in time of trouble God will hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle will he hide me you'll be thinking that God is hiding you, no, God does not hide you, but it, look at verse 6, I say and he will set my feet upon the rock, now shall my head be lifted above my enemy I come today in the name that is above every name, declaring the word of God over you. God will establish you before every trouble. He will lift you before every trouble. Your head is lifted. You can wake up in the morning even with all the news that you have heard. You will declare this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad. The Proverbs 4 by 18 says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. The word of God cannot fail. Anyone who has discovered the word of God becomes the word of God. You know, in all the promises that God made to Joshua, he said to Joshua in Joshua verse 8, Let the book of the law not depart from thy mouth. Let it not leave your mouth. Let nothing else come out from your mouth. No matter what they tell you, no matter what you hear, what you speak matters. Are you hearing me? What you speak is what becomes, not what you hear. Let the book of the law not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate in it day and night, so that you observe to do all that is written he said then he shall make your way prosperous and have good sources child of God your level of prosperity is determined by you your level of sources is determined by you based on what you speak with your mouth let nothing else come out of your mouth but what God 
God have said. Why? Because there are things, there are things that will not that, that have not heard God, but they will hear God through you. Speak to those things. Nothing can die in your life. Nothing will fail in your life. Look at it and say, hear yet the word of God. The prophecy is this. The Bible says the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Prophesy to everything around you. Speak to things. Speak to situation. Speak to circumstance. Speak to yourself. Is somebody hearing me? Anything you want to say? The reason why you need to know the word of God is because on earth, you are the one who is supposed to speak the word of God. You know, the Bible says something that God created everything that he has created, but the naming was done in Genesis 2 verse 18. The Bible said, whatsoever them called them, they became. I learned something from that. Whatsoever I call it, that's what it should be. You should learn to call it in accordance to what God has called it. That's why we must know the word of God. The authority we have in Christ Jesus is the knowledge of the word. That's why you see John, uh, Paul in Ephesians in Philippians 3. He began to talk. He said, know that I may know him. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformable unto his death. Because I have not yet apprehended that which I am apprehended of. But one thing I do. I forget the things that are behind. I push forward to the mark of his high calling in Christ Jesus. I know who I am in Christ. And that gives me confidence to live the life that I live. Somebody hearing me? I know the promises of God. And I know God, God cannot lie. When the ordinary believer does not know the promises of God, you'll be waiting for anybody to pray for you. You'll be waiting. You'll be running from pillar to pillar because you don't know what God said consigning you. You can be the... See, Hosea 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. No living treatment will be destroyed because of lack. That's why we make sure to point you. Go into the world. Because there is written of you. The word of God, Hebrew 4 verse 12, is sharper than two as their sword, piercing to the divine son of the bone and the marrow. It is the designer of the heart and the intent of man. The word of God is sharp. The word of God is zealous, is impregnable, is authoritative. You know, John captured it and gave us a picture of what the word of God is. In John 1 from verse 1, he's saying the beginning was the word. So you must know that. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was, was God. Nothing was made that was made with, because in him was all things made that was made and in him was life and the life was the light of man. In him was life and the life was the light of man. The word of God is the light that shines in you. Without the word of God you can shine and he went on he said God sent a man John 1 verse 6 he sent a man his name was John he was a witness he was sent as a witness of the light so that through him men will believe through his testimony can I say something to you you are sent that through you men will believe of that light he said but he's not the true light we are not the true light Jesus is the true light he is not the true light but he was sent as a witness of the light. He said that light we're talking about he shines upon everyone that is in the world. One of the things that behoved me is in verse 10. He says he came to his to the world. He said he was in the world and the world knew him not. Verse 11 is one thing we're talking about me and you. He came to his own. His own receiving not. Verse 12 but as many that receive him to them he gave power you begin to manifest power when you receive the word of God there is no powerful Christian without the word because for as many that receive him to them he gave power I want to ask you a question have you received the word have you received the word because if you look at verse 11 he said he came he, he was in the world but he came to his own there are two distinct things he was in the world he didn't come to the world he was in the world but he came to his own you are saved i know but have you received the word of god 
You can. So how do you receive it? You know, Romans 10 says, how can they believe? Let's back up. Romans 10 verse 8. He said that the word is near us, even in our heart, which is the word of God that we preach. And if any man believe in his heart and confess with his mouth, he shall be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto... But how can they believe in whom they have not heard? How can you believe if you have not engaged in the word of God? You cannot be a living tremite if you don't have a personal Bible one. You can't be a living tremite if you don't engage in the studying of that world. Because when we come together, we are coming with the knowledge that we have gleaned. And by that knowledge, we are able to fellowship and share grace. You can't sit at home Monday to Sunday and come on Sunday. You'll be useless to the fellowship. Am I communicating? Because everyone should come with a psalm. Everyone will come with a word. Is somebody hearing me? If you were dealing with it, you come prepared. You are not coming to hear an entertainer. You are not coming to hear. Uh, uh, you are coming for the affirmation of the word that you have received. If you engage, you would have come. All I would have been doing by the voice of God is affirming what you have it's covered. But if you search nothing, what would I affirm? It will be mere preaching. So if you, you can only be a living tremor if you dutifully engage in the world. So when you come, you're coming for affirmation. The reason why that will happen is when you begin to, when you become a student of the world, you'll be eager for fellowship. Is somebody hearing me? Because already you are impregnated by the world that you have. You, you are looking for fellowship. The Bible says in Psalm 133 verse 1, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that runs from the head of Aaron down to his bed to his skirt. He said there God commands his blessing let me show you the implication of engaging in the world when you discover the word on Monday spoken concerning you you understand that in fellowship something will break you can't wait for Sunday you are waiting uh, you are waiting uh, when Sunday work comes up uh, you are running to the place of fellowship with the world because some came with psalms uh, some came with hymns uh, some came with promises for the manifestation of God but because you receive nothing there is no motivation there is no motivation because empty is equal to empty but when you have received the word you are saying God I can't wait to go there is a way God programs it that some of the manifestation of your word must come in contact. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 7 to every man is giving grace according to the gift of our shelter. God, I will not pastor those who are too lazy to discover your purpose for their life. It will be, it will be a struggle. The purpose of God for you is in the word of God. When you discover it, you come and we fellowship together. Iron sharpened iron. So shall a man sharpen the countenance of his bread. Uh, let me show you what that means. Uh, God said to Elijah in 1 Kings 17, uh, Go to Zarephath, uh, for I have commanded the widow woman. God sends his servants to men and women who have discovered the word of God. If you have nothing, I can't help you. Are you hearing me? If you have not received his word, there is nothing I can do for you. Because the word of God you receive is what? At this Catalia. Anna was on the altar communicating with God. The moment Anna received from God, the servant of God came and said, Beat on the reason we see people come to church, nothing happened, is because you have not set out something we have to work with. So you say, I've been in that church for 20 years, nothing has happened. Nothing will happen because the only way things will happen is what you come with. What Moses, when you came to the presence of God, what is in your hand? There is nothing God does that he does without his word. And anyone who will give attention to the word of God is a wonder to their word. The Bible says in Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3, 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sin, nor sit in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In it does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Ah, he says, His leaves shall not wither. Ah, he bringeth all his fruit in season. Whatsoever he doeth, my children can fail. My generation can fail. Whatsoever he do it. So my son says to me, Dad, I want to be looking. You will succeed looking. I want to be jumping. You will succeed jumping. Because the scripture says, if you can miss looking with the word of God, looking becomes trendy. Men begin to purchase looking because it is missed with the word of God. The Bible says uh, the word of God they heard did not profit them because it was not missed by faith in them that heard it. So it is not whatsoever you do that prospers. It is based on the word of God missing in whatsoever you do makes it prosper. Somebody hear me? You are going to engage with the word of God because it will never fail. You have to effort. You have to chew the word of God. You have to eat the word of God. You have to do it. It is necessary for our success. Prosper. Prosperity is an availability in the word of God. I like to round up. God could not succeed without his word. God in himself could not succeed without his word. How come you think you will succeed without his word? He can. The Bible says, you see, when you look at that Hebrew 4 verse 12, it says the word of God is quick. It means it's alive and active. Every time you discover the word of God, it begins to act in your life. It's alive and active. What God said he would do, he has done. How many of us know that? Oh God. When the angels look at you, what they see is the champion that left heaven waiting to manifest on earth creations, Romans 8 verse 19 are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. They are waiting for you to manifest. In Hebrew 12 verse 1, the Bible seeing that we are in camp with a great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight, every sin that is only beset us. Let us run with patience. The race that is set before, you know why? That race, you have won the race. The stadium is Packed with witnesses who saw you leave heaven, they know what God has done through you, and they are applauding you. Why not win for them? Can I beg somebody just win for the sake of God? Win because the angels are watching. The Bible says, consigning them in Ephesians 3, verse 10. Unto, unto principalities and power might be made known the manifold wisdom of God by the church. The keyboard is too loud. If you are not a product of the word of God, you are a failure no matter what you have achieved. Paul says, I am what I am. I want to see young people who excel by the word. How do you excel? Say the word said. Peter said to Jesus, if it be you, I know this is water, but ask me to come. I will come. Irrespective of the understanding of man, whatever your work. Do you know what Mary said to them in John 2? He said, whatsoever he asks you to do, do what? Ever. Whatsoever the word says to do, it doesn't need to make sense. It makes God. If God says you are healed in the midst of terminal sickness, wake up and say, because God said it, I believe it. And you see yourself walking that healing. If God says you are prosperous in the time of famine, go and ask Isaac in Genesis 26. In that same year, Isaac reaped a hundredfold return. It is not the land that produced for you, it is the word that produced for you. Is somebody hearing me? That's why the prophet cried. He said, The summer is past, the winter is gone. Ah, why are we not healed? Why are the daughters of my children not healed? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no fear? Physician there as God refused to be God. God succeeded by his word. Listen to me. 
It doesn't have many, matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter what, what has gone wrong. It doesn't matter what people have seen about you. But look at what Micah said in Micah 7, 8. He said, rejoice not over me, O my enemy. For when I fall, I shall rise. When I'm in the darkness, the Lord shall be my light. Don't rejoice yet. It's not over yet. It's not over with me. My God, I'm a finished walk in the hand of God. The Bible says consigning me. In Ephesians 2, verse 10, I am God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has foreordained that I may walk in it. Don't laugh at my today. Don't mock where I am today because who he did for no them he did predestinate that he may be conformed to the image of his dear son that he may be firstborn among many brethren for them who he did for predestinate he did call. Who he did call he did justify. Those he justified he did glorify. What what then can we say if God be for us who can be against us no power can stop you I said no power can stop you death could not stop him grave could not stop him you are unstoppable I say you are unstoppable I say you are unstoppable it doesn't matter what happens to you by the reason of the knowledge of the word of God there's a guarantee you will succeed anywhere and God succeeded by his words. So if you look at the beginning, when God began to communicate to Moses, he said, Moses, if you, can, if you don't know me, you can't walk with me. You see, it, it takes to know God to walk with God. He said, Moses, I'm going to send you on an assignment that no mortal man can do except they know me. Yeah, are you hearing me? Remember Moses asked God. He said, when they ask me who sent me, what will I tell them? What Moses was saying to God is that I don't know you enough to communicate you to the people you are sending me to. God did not just tell him. That's why we read in the Bible, it says, say to them, I am that I am. Now, that's not what God said to him. God took him to Genesis and say in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth that's how Moses God used the hand of Moses to pen it down God be, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water Genesis 1 verse 3 and God said let there be light and God saw the light that he has said if you look at Genesis 1 when you begin to read it verse 3 God said, verse 6, God said, verse 9, God said, verse 14, God said, verse 16, God said, verse 19, God said, verse 22, God said, verse 26, he stopped and said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let man have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the cows of the earth, over everything that creeped upon the earth, verse 27, and God created them male and female he created them then he and verse 28 and God blessed them and said be fruitful come buddy come let me show you what God did Go, let me. somebody volunteer and come somebody volunteer and come yes look at what God said give me Genesis 1 verse 28 let me show you what God did when God created man and God said and God blessed them and this is how God blessed and said Rachika, be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowls of the earth over every creeping thing that creep upon the earth and so shall it be while I was praying yesterday the Lord said to me anyone that steps out when you make the call will walk in this magnitude when we say let somebody volunteer sometimes people volunteer into their destiny I want you to watch Brachika from today on he'll be walking in dominion why because what I spoke when I was speaking it was God who was speaking at the time of creation God took Brachika back at the time he was creating man and began to impose on him the things he said to man Brachika had become the time in this our generation that carries this new mandate because in every generation a man carries the mandate that's why in Genesis 9 when Noah came out of the uh, the flood and God in Genesis 9 verse 1 the Bible says again God blessed man and said be fruitful let somebody else come the whole church is coming now somebody come
Right, make I go to your first door. And God said, You see them? Now the thing is this some watch and some receive. Who would you be? You will be so full. It takes the humble to receive from God. The pious is saying it doesn't make sense. That's the thing I do. And God blessed and his sons and said unto them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth please go back and God bless Jennifer and said if I put the barrier and say it's too, it's, it's too much let's wait let some people go there's some people can come because you see there are people in John I will say that after that and God bless Jennifer and all her sons and said unto them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God bless blessing and all her sons and said be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth and God said unto Lisa and all her sons and said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God says to the shell and all our sons and said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth start coming this way and God said to you and all your sons be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth and God said to you sir be fruitful and all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you man and all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you man and all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you and your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to you all your sons be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and God said to all your sons, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. God said to you and all your sons, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and all your sons, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to you and your sons be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And God said to your sons be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Satayadoska, stand up to your feet, everyone. In Genesis two verse eight. The Bible says when God brought Adam into the Garden of Eden, whatever Adam called them, they became. Every word of God I spoke into your life, verse 18. I have spoken to a lie, so shall it be. One of the things you don't understand is this. When God speaks, the prophet says, I was, as I was commanded, as I was commanded, I was commanded, and I prophesied as I was commanded. When God told me something, he said, this is the way I have blessed men. Go ye therefore and bless them that way. When God did that blessing, man began to walk in that dimension. Do you know, why does it need to be an all your sons? 
Paul captured it. He said, Levi was blessed in Abraham's leons. When Melchizedek blessed Abraham, he blessed all the children that will come from their leon. So you see me, bless shine. You see, shine is still a baby, not up to one year. But the children that shine will have have already received the blessings. They are walking in the generational blessings. They are walking in blessings that was spoken in 2023. They might be born in 2050, but blessings are waiting for them. He's gone ahead of them to make sure that they will be fruitful they will multiply I speak unto you and all your sons be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth I speak unto you and all your sons be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth I speak unto you and your sons be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth give him glory for the word of God you receive celebrate Jesus celebrate Jesus celebrate Jesus thank him for his word my life can never remain the same. The word of God is at work in my life. Making me the champion on earth. I'm a recipient. You see the Bible says something in Psalm 107. It said Joseph was bounded with chains and fetter until his word came. When his word came, every chain is broken. Every fetter was removed. Can I speak to you? By the reason of the spoken word, every chain over your life is broken every fetter is removed every hindrance is removed every stoppage is removed every stumbling block is removed victory is your portion victory is your portion victory is your portion victory is your portion you will testify you will be celebrated you will be celebrated in Jesus Martin we will pray there is no recipient of the word of God that can ever fail. There is no recipient of the word of God that can ever fail. You can't fail with the word. If somebody asks you, why have I not seen the manifestation? Tell them, wait a little longer because the word of God cannot fail. Cannot fail. I'm a product of his word. I'm a product of his word. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the word of God. Power to save. Power to heal. Power to raise. Power to make. Power to send. I send you by the word of God. I send you to your word as a champion by the word of God. And I'd like to close with this admonition. In James 1 verse 22. He said, be doers. Not hearers alone. Deceiving your own self. Anyone who hears and does not do is not deceiving anybody but themselves. Because the word of God can only work for those who walk in it. It is not just anointing that makes men, it is the word that makes. It is not who pray for you, it is the word of God you have received. That's why Mary said to the angel, Be it unto me according to the word. Ah, Satan. A mother will go in the night and say, Lord, I know there is war in my home, but be it according to the word. You will wake up and you will see the word of God begins to work. The things that have failed will begin to align. Bones coming onto bones. Sinews are coming. Breath are coming. Failures are becoming champions. Are you here? Relegated people are becoming winners. Somebody looked at your child and said, there is no way. There is a way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Don't tell me what my child can become. I know what they will become by the word of God. Remember the testimony of a dear servant of God. Then my mom had nothing but the word of God to stop believing. We had no food, but we had the word of God. No money for education, but the young man decided to go to school. Why the other parents were giving money, were giving things. The mother says, son, go. I will pray. My prayers will go with you. Can you go when they say, oh, my prayers will go with you? Mary said to them, whatever he says to you, do. Can you take a journey just by prayer going with you? And the young man got to school. And they were meant to register. I don't know if you've ever gone. During the time of registration, they remember the fee. Go to the bursary. And they, were, they would just be looking at your fee. 
And when you are so those who don't have any sponsor, but how many of us know that he's the father to the fatherless, the husband to the widow, the sponsor of those who know man. People like us are those who God by himself too. If I tell you my testimony, you will know that God, God took us from the married clay. When we had no form, no con, when nobody would desire you. When people look at you, even your parents say you are a failure. God said, I created this one. Why you were in your mother's womb? I formed you. I knew you. I ordained you. You might be misbehaving today, but behavior is waiting for you. Oh, God. You don't have a testimony if you are not made by God. You don't have a testimony if there are no failures in your life. Show me the scars and I will know that they are your scars. And he got there while others are boasting of the wealth of their parents. He, couldn't, he only came by the prayer of the mom. And while the young man was there on the queue, the mom was on her knee in the throne room where men had been enthroned. And why it was getting to his turn? Because the Bible says, I will overturn. You know, sometimes when it's getting to your turn and the answer, God pulls you back. When somebody's overtaking you, don't bother because nobody can ever overtake you. Are you hearing me? When somebody run ahead of you, don't bother. Just calm down because some of them are hailers of wood and fetchers of water and they will clear the way for you. Some people need to do the hard work so that when you come, the throne will be right to be sat upon. Is somebody hearing me? When he got to the bursary, that's when they said that the school decided to give the one standing there scholarship. It is not a mistake. It is a man. It is something that heaven has done. God is looking for mothers who can pray. Stop complaining and start praying. Are you hearing me? Because when women choose to pray, heaven chooses to answer. Is somebody hearing me? Look at all the parables that Jesus made the bad prayer. He made it with women. Why? Because women are tenacious. When a woman decides to succeed, nobody stops them. Are you hearing me? Trem women are not weak women. Are you hearing me? Women of destiny are not feeble women. They are wise women who understand the use of lamb they understand the lose of oil they understand the use are you hearing me there was a wise woman in samaria there was a wise woman and men prophets are sent to women who understands god little reason men are too mad to serve god you have all their wives in church all their husbands are sleeping at home because they are not relevant to god's scheme Any man who cannot bow to God is not a man. He's not a man. You look at the Bible, it's this that today. That where they say it's women came. Where are their husbands? When a woman is bringing her child, what was the husband doing? Sitting at home. Say, you know, go, with, go to church with the children. I should have gone home and said, shame at you. That is why Abigail said, you know, my husband is foolish. Because wise men follow God. If your husband is watching, get home, say, I'm not talking to him. If you feel offended, change. If I see you in church, I'll stop talking. I want you to celebrate God for what you have received. Our young girls will not marry men who are not bowing before God. Because any man who bow before God will not abuse you. Are you, they won't be quarreled at home because when they bow before God, God will correct their head. One day I had, I had the misunderstanding with, uh, with Mommy B and I went to pray. While I was praying, God said to me, I'm not talking to you. I said, why? He said, if I have to talk to you, you have to be talking to Mommy B. You know why? He says, make sure you have peace with your wife so that your prayers will not be hindered. And I left. I went. I said, eh. Pride. I was climbing upstairs with pride. My legs were heavy. And God says, stay there as long as you want to remain proud. Go and apologize. So, you see what it means to marry a godly husband. It means you are saved. But when your husband is not submitted to God, there's always a problem. You know who to report. I will report you to God. I don't want to be reported to God. Say, sorry, sorry, sorry. Father, the word that we have received will bear fruit in our life. They will manifest hundredfold. In Jesus' name we 